We saw previously that the synchronized method that is defined on any ref kind of gives you a fundamental mechanism for preventing race conditions. It allows you to lock a section of code so that only one thread at a time can be in you know, that or actually other sections of code that are kind of all sensitive because they'll be modifying the same memory. That's not a sufficient um, element for organizing threads and making them cooperate. So there's another very low level set of methods that are also on any ref called wait notify and it turns out there's also a notify all and in reality you shouldn't use notify you should use notify all and we'll go into the the reasons for that here in this video so to illustrate this we'll go ahead and we'll create a new app and the example I'm going to use is just have kind of some threads counting but we're going to have them count using this wait notify mechanism so the idea of wait is wait is kind of you might almost think of it as the fundamental blocking call when you call wait it has that thread cease to process it doesn't go away it doesn't kill the thread it doesn't terminate it it just causes it to stop running okay for an indefinite period of time until some other thread wakes it up and the way in which the other thread wakes it up is by using a notify or a notify all so I want to build a few threads here so we'll make a val called threads and now I'm going to use a tabulate instead of a fill because I want each one of these to know their number because that will be part of our output so that we can see which thread is doing what. So I rocket and then we're going to build a new thread and as before we are going to override the run method which doesn't take any arguments and doesn't give us back any values. Okay and inside of here we're going to let the user know that this thread has started and then I want to run through a loop that is going to have it count up um, so we'll say for JN125 I don't want to have them count too far and I'd like to have the uh, have this thread wait now we call wait on an object um, and I'm going to use this object out here at the top so basically the you know, I'm, I'm going kind of to the top level so that everything in this whole application is going to kind of be synchronized on that one object so we'll call wait and then I want to print something out after we've waited. Now of course this won't happen uh, until after that wait has been woken up. Otherwise we're still in a waiting state. So this will cause it to, to just sit around and do nothing. Then something will have to wake it up and then it will print this and then it will notify some other thread okay. so we come down here after we have built all of those we need to start all of our threads so we need to do a for each on them and tell them all to start I'm gonna sleep our main thread for a little while so that all of these other threads have a chance to kind of get going so I'll sleep the main thread for one second and then we want to wake up one of the threads now one of the things about the notify method is that when you call notify it uh, only wakes up one thread that is that is waiting on the current object that you send the notify to and you have no control over which one of those threads 
is is woken up. And that's actually that's the fundamental problem with using plain notify is that you lack that control. It happens randomly. And wait, so we talked about the fact that synchronized can cause deadlock. <laughs> Obviously wait can cause deadlock too. If I have a if I have you know three or four or five threads that are all waiting on the other one and no one calls notify, well then they're all going to be stuck there. The reason you get deadlock is even if you remember to call notify, if you somehow accidentally have an extra thread in there that is also waiting that you didn't know about and it gets notified, it wakes up and it does stuff, but all of the threads that you thought you were going to be waking up might stay asleep. So we'll try running this and we get an interesting error here. Okay. Something happened that it didn't like. So it calls notify first, illegal monitor state exception. Oh boy, uh, what, illegal monitor state exception. What does that mean? Well, it turns out there is a rule on wait and notify that they can only be called in a thread that holds the lock for the object that it's being called on. So in other words, it has to be called in a synchronized block. So this notify down here, needs to be inside of a properly spelled synchronized and of course because it's out here it's automatically synchronizing on the weight counting but both this weight and this notify also need to be inside of a synchronized on weight counting so we will do that. We'll put a synchronized block here, then we call our wait, we print out i and j, then we call notify. And this one down here we'll call notify once, it'll wait one thread up. So we have three threads once again. They're all going to print out start, and then they're all going to come in here and they're all just going to sit there and wait and do nothing. Then one of them will be notified. That notify will come up here and it will cause one of the three, we don't know which one of the three, we have no control over which one of the three, to wake up. So they all start, and then we got these printouts. So the first notify woke up thread one, it printed one, and then it called notify, which woke up thread zero, which printed one, and then it ca called notify, and then went back to sleep, because of course each one of these, after they call notify, we're inside of this loop, and then they go back and they wait again. So. This went 102, 102, 102, 102 in that order. But if we run this again, 012, 012. Okay, so we don't have an, uh, any control over the order in which these things are activating, 210. We don't know. And that's, that lack of control is what makes the use of plain old notify error prone. So instead of using regular notify, what's actually strongly recommended, strongly recommended you never use notify. It's still in there, but it's strongly recommended you don't use it, and instead you use notify all. Now the difference here is that notify all is going to wake up all the threads. Now that might not be what we want, but the idea here is that we are going to put in some boolean values or some type of a flag that tells us which of the threads we actually want to have woken up. So what I'm gonna do here is we're going to make a val for an array, and this one I can use fill, that is has as many values as the number of our threads, and they're all gonna start off as false. And what this Boolean is telling is telling you is whether the thread at that location should be woken up. Okay. So before we call notify all, we are going to take one of those, so for example, sub zero, and set it equal to true. And what that says is that while I'm going to notify all the threads, thread zero is, is, knows that it should wake up, the other two will still have false values and they should put themselves back to sleep. So what we do in here is instead of using just a plain old wait, we stick our wait instead of a while loop. So it's while not handoff of i. So each thread 
will check its Boolean and see, hey, is it my turn? Uh, and if it's not their turn, they just go back to sleep. Okay, so they go to sleep. When they get woken up, they check, am I supposed to be awake? And if the answer is no, they go back to sleep. This way you have control as the programmer over which threads are waking up and which ones aren't. To keep things happy here, we then need to tell that thread, it just woke up, It's someone needs to tell it to wake up again. And we're gonna change this to a notify all. And then each thread after it does a print needs to figure out which thread is going to print next. So we need to take one of these and in some ways we kind of want to do i plus one equals true. Of course i plus one won't work because then once it gets up to the last thread that would be out of bounds. We need a modulo in here. So i plus one modulo num threads. So basically each thread will wake up the next one in turn. And this code here is gonna, because we said it starts at zero, is guaranteed to give us zero, goes to one, goes to two, goes back to zero, one, two. So we have control over what's happening here. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. And it does the same thing the next time and the next time. So this is the approach that you should take with your weights and your notifies is wait should always be called inside of a while loop that is checking some flag to see if it's actually time for it to wake up. And instead of using plain old notify, you should always use notify all. That way you're far less likely to cause deadlock because you're telling everyone to wake up. The worst thing you're gonna do is spuriously wake up a thread that wasn't supposed to wake up. Turns out that's actually better and easier to deal with, to diagnose, to figure out what's going on than having a thread that's just, that well, that's dead because it's waiting and it's never going to be woken up because it doesn't print anything for you. So that's wait and notify and notify all and a brief introduction to kind of how you would use them inside of, of your, your programming.